how much disease you have, it is vulnerable to inflammation. Now, I think it's the third time I've said that. After seven times, I'll try not to repeat myself because that is the point. You get inflammation of the arteries, it can rupture. If you have a little bit of plaque, you will get a stroke because it goes up to the brain. The idea is to treat the inflammation by getting the tubby factor less than 80. What step is this? Step three. CIMT in my book is titled, Is Not a Duplex Carotid Ultrasound. Don't get those two tests mixed up. Back to our hostage. She actually went on to get a CIMT even though her calcium score was zero. Okay, now there's three ways to grade uh, CIMTs. Now this is of the neck, right everybody? She had nothing in the heart. Her calcium score was zero. Now we're going to the neck. You can have three results. One result is you're less than 25 percentile. All right? That means you're better than just about anybody in your age or your sex. All right? The next one is 25 to 75 percentile. This is abnormal. Okay, it's not terrible, but it's abnormal. It shows you probably have plaque or atheroma in the wall of your carotid. Okay? The third one, no good. Greater than 75 percentile. Now, this shows you have some serious disease going on. All right. So now, we said her tubby factor was 143. We said she had a zero calcium score. The doctor doesn't know why we even bothered to order this. We got three answers here, multiple choice. So all you have to say is raise your hand for number one, less than 25 percentile. Okay, she looks healthy. I like that answer. You could be a doctor. <laughs> number two is 25 to 75 percentile. Oh, about the same. It seems about, and then number three is greater than 75 percentile. Nobody here. You know, why didn't we place bets? I, <laughs> we should have. She's greater than 75 percentile on her neck. Wow. Now, did I pay you to come here? No. You just happened to show up and you had your tests. And this is what we call serendipity, right? She has plaque. She has disease. All right? So this is what you have to do. Figure out your tubby factor. Get a CAC. Get a CIMT. Find out if you have disease. Now, I, I know a lot of doctors say to me, well, everybody has disease. Come on. I'll tell you, I've got 90-year-olds with calcium scores of zero. So, no, not everybody has disease. That's not true. It is true that it's probably the most common cause of death in this country, so it's epidemic and most people have disease. And your doctor's telling you you're okay, and I'm telling you you're not okay, because if you have plaque, it's vulnerable to inflammation, which can rupture the plaque. I think that's the third or fourth time I said it. We'll see how many more times I say it. Okay, you got plaque. What are we going to do now? You know what? No surgery, no stents. It's really wonderful. The treatment is just two medicines. And guess what? No diet or exercise. <laughs> you didn't think there'd be that bonus in there. I know you're happy, Ron. Step four, combination therapy. Don't just be on a statin. So how did I get this combination therapy? Believe me, I did not make this up. But I did uh, learn from other doctors that this one particular medicine called Enduracin, right, is well tolerated. This, I'll repeat that. Uh, do you need a doctor's note to excuse you from the telephone? So. so and duracin is niacin. Everybody here heard of niacin before? How many people here have taken it, niacin? And did you stay with it? You did. How was the flushing? I got the flush free, no problem. Oh, guess what? That pill doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work great. I'm not kidding. Flush free niacin does not help heart disease. A lady told me it helped her skin, though. So you might want to stay on it. Because your skin is gorgeous. <laughs> Just go to 500 milligrams twice a day with meals. I doubt you're going to have any significant flushing, right? I told a cardiologist about this product, and he said, you're making me nauseous. Because you know what happens. Patients take niacin. They wake up at 1 a.m. morning. 
they're red, they're hot, they're sweaty. They go to the emergency room, they call their cardiologist and wake them up. Well, that drug never gets prescribed again, let me tell you. All right. This drug should not cause that side effect. By the way, that side effect is not bad. It actually is good. It shows the drug is working and it's fine. All right. So, but I know patients don't want to deal with it. So I have found this drug is like your slow niacin. They're both very good. They've had studies on slow niacin. It's a very good drug. And Duracin, however, has a wax matrix. It's slow release, better. And what's nicer, it's cheaper than yours. If you go online, after you use up your pills, you can go online on the internet, look up Enduracin, and you can get a thousand pills for ninety dollars. Now you, you know, you can't get many drugs, active, very active, strong drugs, cheaper than that. You actually can. You can get niacin in immediate release, which is cheaper than M and M's, but nobody can take it because the flushing is so terrible. But if you're a tough person and you like flushing. Well, the women here who have had flushing and like it, raise your hands. Yeah, okay. But I actually know, you know, I've experienced the flush a couple of times. Not too bad. So the other drug is the, uh, what I call the king of all drugs in my book. It's a statin. Statins are the king of all drugs. This is the fountain of youth in America. I don't care what you've read about statins. Statins are wonderful, wonderful drugs. They reduce the inflammation. Okay, they've saved countless lives. Now, if you get a little muscle pain, that's a problem. Check your vitamin D. Sometimes that helps that. But what can help is that we don't go really high on the statin dose. That's why I like the combination therapy. You start off on sort of a medium dose, 10 or 20 milligrams, whatever your doctor says. This, you do need a doctor's prescription. You do need to see a doctor. This, you don't. It's over the counter. Go right to the internet tonight and get it. But please tell your doctor you're taking it because it is a strong drug. But you can, go to, you can buy slow niacin tonight at the drugstore, right? So the simvastatin is now generic. This is the drug that had all the big breakthrough studies to, sh to, s to prevent mortality, not just morbidity, meaning cutting down number of heart attacks. At the end of all this, you know, people said, oh, statins cause suicide. Oh, statins cause you to get in the car and drive into a tree. Uh, you know, not true. Even after all the suicides, all the accidents, everything, simvastatin has shown reduction in mortality after five years. This is a wonderful, wonderful drug, all right? Uh, you don't want to take the highest dose, 80 milligrams, especially if you're older. That, that, that'll kill you. But if you take 10 to 20 to 40 milligrams, that's very safe. And the beauty is you can be on 20 milligrams of simvastatin and never have to go to 40 milligrams because you take niacin. The two work together. And together they take the cholesterol out of the artery. So this is available today. And how much does this cost? Less than $100 a year. Right? You go to Walmart, you go to Sam's, you can get three months supply right, for $10. And then you take it with the niacin, which you can get for you know, a year's supply for $90. So um, 1,000 pills, which is more than a year's supply. So this is cheap. This is inexpensive. This is safe. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, not everybody can take simvastatin. So then you have to go to another drug, go to another drug. I actually take Crestor, which is one of the newer ones, more expensive. But it's strong. I like it. I tolerate it. Uh, it also tends to raise HDL a little bit, but what I'm trying to find is for everybody to take a drug that's cheap and that has been shown to be very efficacious. No drug has been shown to be more efficacious than Zocor Simvastatin, okay? No drug. Now, other drugs will get your cholesterol down lower, but you don't have to worry about that usually if you take the niacin. Now, let's say you take the niacin and simvastatin and you can't get your tubby factor below 80. Well, then I would think, you know, your doctor would switch you from simvastatin to Crestor, which is a much stronger drug, all right? But these are very precise medical decisions, which I'm going to leave to your doctor, and I know he can handle it after he reads my book for sure. But what I want to do is to tell people, look, do the five steps, and let's, you know, 
save the world from plaque, because it can be done. You're taking your two drugs, and you've got your tubby factor below 80, and you say, okay, let's see if it worked. Now, nobody does this but me, I think, in town. I don't think anybody orders CIMTs but me, pretty much. A couple of people do. But you look at another CIMT of the neck, and you look to see if there's progression, regression, or it's the same. Now, I, th I think if you look on page 8 in my book, you will see that I've listed my results. And my first test, I went from like 0.7, and then the second test, a year later, I went to 0.5. So I had regression, okay? That's what you want. But after that, I didn't have any more regression because you reach a baseline and it doesn't get thinner. In fact, mine will continue to get thicker. That's why it's related to age. As you get older, it does get thicker, but you just don't want to be a lot thicker than everybody else. So in two years, you check it and see if there's progression of your atheroma or the thickness of the wall. If there is progression, then something is not right. Usually it's because the patient's not taking medicine. That's why I like to take the uh, lab levels, the tubby factor, three times a year. Because if, it, if I see three times a year, you're under 80. Because can you believe it? Sometimes patients don't take their medicine until a month before they see the doctor. I know you don't know anybody like that. But, but to keep everybody honest, you know, I like to do it three times a year. And if three times a year your tubby factor is under 80 and you still have progression, there's what we call discordance. It's because your tubby not only is your LDLC not accurate, but your tubby factor is not accurate. It's a cruel world, but it can be. And the best tests, the best tests, are called an LDL particle and an ApoB. Now, why are they not earlier? Because that would mean more money. And the tubby factor is a lot better than the LDLC and uh, a little bit not as good as these two. But these, I mean, for those of you who like to drive Cadillac, drink champagne, you can get these tests done anytime. Uh, they're both about $100 each. And you want your LDL particle number less than 750, and you want your, or you want your ApoB less than 60. This is in the book. This is what I actually tell people to do if they want to spend more money and be absolutely sure. They don't want to wait two years. But I want people to know that their arteries are getting better. And you can know, and it's just, a, in Topeka, it's just another $100. So, so, those are the five steps, all right? Go home tonight, figure out your tubby factor. It's very easy. Go and get a calcium score at St. Luke's for $50. I'll give you a prescription tonight if you ask me. Go get a CIMT at the Heart Center at Stormont. I'll give you a prescription tonight if you ask me, but you have to sign a release. Then if you have plaque, talk to your doctor about combination therapy. And then in two years, get it done again to know that it's working. Five steps, save the world from plaque. Thanks for watching this video. If you would like more information, go to my book, The Tubby Theory from Topeka.